A vintage model traction engine restoration. This is part 15. Full reassembly and a live steam test. This live steam test is using gas as a fuel and it will make a change from running the traction engine on compressed air. The very first thing to do is to remove the ash pan because it's full of charcoal from the previous attempts at running it by the owner. I will be giving the engine a coal fired steam test but not today as it's raining outside. So it's on the bench, my much abused bench, which is now full of charcoal residue. So out with my Henry vacuum cleaner to get rid of that. Then the gas fired live steam test can begin. This charcoal residue is a very fine ash and it was stuck to everything. It took a couple of attempts to clear the ash pan. Before the live steam test though, I do actually have to put the engine back together. So the first thing to do is to clean up the motion guard using some WD-40, then refit the guard to the engine. The motion guard is held in place by four 6BA bolts, or slot-headed machine screws, whichever you prefer. Now it's time for a small amount of painting. After I've fitted the guard using the small screws, I touch them in using some green paint. And this green paint is hammerite, which is quite a good match for the paint that's on the engine. Before anyone writes in, this is hammerite smooth right paint, not the stuff that dries really strangely. I'm sorry to be over fussy, but if I don't mention the fact that it is smooth right rather than normal hammerite, some fool out there will write in to tell me. From my experience, there really are a lot of armchair model engineers and these people are very meticulous. In this clip, the wheel is now fitted. Time to put on the fittings that hold it in place and stop it from falling off. But before I do that, I'm going to clean up the strakes. This was quite a long job. I thought I was never going to get to the end of it. First of all, I took each wheel into the outer part of the workshop and used an orbital sander to get through the bulk of the rust. And here, back in the inner part of the workshop, I'm using a piece of Scotch-Brite to finish off the job. I can't get them perfectly clean, nor do I want to. I only need to remove the top of the surface rust to make them look better. I keep mentioning this word patina or patina, and it's very important to keep this engine looking, period. It is, after all, a very old vintage engine. Yes, it's had a brand new copper welded boiler fitted, which is a good idea, but I need to leave as much originality as possible. The wheels are held on by a collar, and here I'm tapping a taper pin into place to hold the collar in place. This is more or less the same arrangement as it is on my big traction engine. Before fitting the end covers, I thought it was a good idea to give the wheel a bit of an oiling. I'm using my standard lubricating oil for this. The next job is just a safeguard. I'm fitting a piece of wood to the bench. And what's this for? Well, it's fairly obvious. It's to stop the traction engine accidentally rolling off the bench. I split the wood with screw number five, but nobody's perfect. It's now time to fit the other wheel that I've also cleaned up. The part that's swinging about is the drive plate, and this is screwed to the axle with a long slotted grub screw that goes into a hole in the axle itself. And once it's fitted, everything is very solid. I've fitted the collar and pin to the other side, it's time to see if it works. And as you can clearly see, it's raring to go. In this part of the clip, I'm putting the engine back into neutral. I don't want any surprises in the steam test. The final part of the wheel fitting is to fit the covers. I was going to polish up these centre covers, but they're not actually made of brass, they're made from steel. So I'm forced to leave them in their painted condition. Here I'm finding out which one fits where, using the point of my scriber to find where the holes are. And once again, like a lot of the other fixings on this engine, these very important centre wheel covers are fitted using 6BA bolts. I filled the boiler by running the engine on compressed air and using the crankshaft pump to pump the water into the boiler. The normal way of filling this boiler is through the safety valve and there's a specially made funnel to allow this to happen. After fitting a copper washer to the safety valve, I'm screwing it into place. And as always, I'm using a barco spanner for this. Let the steam test commence. Oh no, I've forgotten something. I have to fit a gas burner into the firebox. So here it is, my small gas burner, which just fits in there nicely. Next thing to do is fairly obvious. I'm connecting some butane propane mixed gas to the burner. 
After lighting the burner, and by the way, always light burners like this underneath the firebox, don't wait until the gas gets up the chimney, because it goes with a real bang. You have to be careful with this gas because it's heavier than air, so it pools around on your bench, or in your model boat, or wherever. I'm speaking from experience. I've singed the hair on my arms, eyebrows and beard many times. In this clip I'm filling the displacement lubricator. When all of a sudden my carbon monoxide alarm goes off. And that's not after very long at all, you have to be really careful. This small gas burner burns perfectly in free air but it doesn't like being inside the firebox. I have two options, I can take the batteries out of the carbon monoxide alarm and possibly die, or I can open the two very large doors to my workshop. I've selected the latter option because I think I am too young and beautiful to die. There's some smoke coming out of the chimney but this is just condensation. This burner is not running anywhere near its capacity. I've turned the gas pressure down so that way there will be less carbon monoxide produced. That's the logic anyway but now it really doesn't matter because I'm almost outside. It's not very warm now, but one has to suffer for one's art, darling. Nothing is showing on the pressure gauge, but the boiler's getting quite warm now. Quite hot, in fact. What I'm doing at the moment is rotating the flywheel to move the piston in the cylinder to clear the condensate, and also to warm up the cylinder to prevent further condensation. This engine does not have any drain cocks fitted. By doing this for a while, the engine starts to run under its own steam without ejecting lots of water from the chimney. The first thing I notice is that the gland on the valve rod is leaking, so here I'm just tightening it up a bit, but really it wants repacking. I'll do that before the next steam test. With 50 pounds per square inch registering on the pressure gauge, time to see what it can do. Some viewers may be horrified at the speed at which I'm running the engine, but don't forget I repair these things, it is my job. If anything is going to break, it needs to break now while it's on the bench, not when it's back with the customer. It passed the speed test with flying colours, nothing fell off it. Time for a very scientific power and torque test. I have my hand on the flywheel, and my hand is simulating a load. Time to open the regulator, but this time I don't think I'll put my hand on the flywheel because it's going to get very hot. Yes, I'm definitely feeling some pain there, so I think I'll use a cloth. Now it's not so painful, but I do have a better idea. The rim of the flywheel is a little bit rusty. I've cleaned it up somewhat with some sandpaper, but now I'm finishing the job off by using a piece of Scotch-Brite. Why not let the steam do the work? All I have to do is hold a piece of Scotch-Brite against the edge of the flywheel and by running the engine, in no time at all, the outer rim of the flywheel becomes quite shiny. And by changing the position of the Scotch-Brite, I can clean up the sides as well. The good news is, the crankshaft-driven water pump worked perfectly and surprisingly, so did the injector although the injector's check valve does need some attention because it's blowing back. That's all I can say for this episode. I'm just going to leave the engine running at a ridiculously high speed, and if it survives this, it will be perfectly fine. That's the end of this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. I'll leave the engine running to the end of the video.
please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.